Good morning. We are just at Portobello Beach and it is just coming up to six in the morning. Lovely way to start the day. And whilst I might be somewhat exhausted, I'm very much looking forward to getting into the sea to assess how I'm getting on with my one case up to Asterix. One case swim time as I'm still acclimatizing to the cold. So don't want to over promise and under deliver if my face, head, general exposed areas can't quite hack it but today what I'm going to do is break down a few things that I've learned over the years with lots of open water swimming so that you can take some elements away and apply to your own as getting in the open water can be tough and I have learned to enjoy slash deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis in the hope that you can too. So if you're watching this video you likely fall into one of three categories. First of all you may well never have opened water swam before and this is your gateway drug into doing so. Number two you might be an experienced open water swimmer triathlete looking for a few tips into the colder water or just trying to brush up on a few things you may not have considered in the past or three you're an Olympic level swimmer in which case welcome I bow to thee but something that is important across all three elements or any blurred lines between is the reliability and quality of your kit because it is currently two degrees air temperature here in Scotland and 6.9 degrees nice 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 water temperature in there so I'm gonna be near pretty duck to my eyeballs but if you are swimming in California let's say although the Pacific Ocean is quite cold bad example if you're swimming in Mauritius you might well be in speedos and those are two very different environments so they need to be treated and respected as such as I'm in Scotland let's break down my kit okay so first things first is my wetsuit which is there for two things one warmth two buoyancy and actually brackets third it's mandatory in most triathlons and as this is a swimming focused video there is a difference between swimming and just getting in the sea with a beanie on in a swimsuit and getting cold and then getting back out into the car there's a bit of a culture online and a bit of a subculture around dipping or duking as we call it here in Scotland but they are very different things and whilst there's some translatable advice across the two there are rifts forming online with the duking gang going oh no need for a wetsuit it's not cold enough for that when they're only in for two minutes rather than swimming for a continuous period of time so please do bear that in mind and as always why feel the need to put yourself in a box and then attack other people's boxes and form subcultures within something which can be enjoyable for all First things first, I have some neoprene booties, which is indeed the official term. So myself and my two dogs have something in common. These are here to keep my feet warm. That's pretty much it. So if you want to look after yourself, look after your extremities, take lessons from the military, look after your hands, look after your feet, and that will keep your core body temperature a bit more reliable overall. Same premise applies. These are gloves. No fancy word this time around, I'm afraid self-explanatory I think but if you are in cold water then you want to make sure that you are as warm and sustainable as possible because being too cold will affect your ability to tolerate volume and continue swimming so if you're planning your training around temperature then make sure your extremities are managed obviously if you're in water that's warm enough and you don't need to consider those things then fantastic but as I'm here in Scotland some of you might be watching this from the UK please do bear it in mind and lastly we have headwear accessories starting with a neoprene skull cap to any guesses keep your head warm nice well done gold star for you then we have goggles good thing to have and a swim cap to kind of just contain the skull cap and add another layer of warmth and I've got this one with me specifically to remind me that at one point last year when I was training for the double brutal I was better at swimming than I was now so this is a bit of a good omen that I brought with me today if you haven't yet seen that video then you can click somewhere on the screen now and watch it. 46 minutes or so of me complaining about a very long triathlon. Bikes have failed. Both gears. You do. This one's fixed, but the fucking road bike's not working. For your viewing pleasure. So that's kit out of the way. Those are the things that I'm going to be wearing today. But on top of that, it is important to have accessories to be able to keep you warm once you get out of the water. A chain robe is very useful. This is the dry robe light, which is a newer version. I've had a heavier duty dry robe for years and years. And then things like a bag where you can easily stick your wet stuff in the bottom for practicality afterwards. 
Basically, whatever you can do to minimize friction getting in and out of the water and create a system that you can rely upon will be the best thing for you. So don't let me prescribe and tell you what to do in your situation because everybody will be different, but make sure you plan ahead and refine the system so that you're not spending too much time cold, shivering, or fumbling around for your car keys because you put them in the bottom of your bag and you can't get into the car, you need the bathroom, and everything's falling apart. So I'm actually having to take a brief interlude just to warm my hands back up before I put the neoprene to get back on. Because I tell you what, nothing gets in the way of my training sessions more than filming for you lot. So I want you all to appreciate that at this point. It's very cold, my hands have stopped working, and I require them very shortly for a swim. If you've seen my last winter swimming video from the end of 2021, then you'll know there is a harsh reality incoming, and that is that you can do all the Wim Hof breathing in the world, all the praying that you like, all of the neopreneing that you like, and there is one universal truth, which is if you're in cold water like I am today, it's gonna suck and you're gonna have to acclimatize over time. So there is not a hack for you to be able to overcome that and this video will not be able to deliver that to you, but hopefully it can be a fair reflection of reality. And the reality is you're gonna have a bad time. So the swim cap on my head was the last time I did a real big shift in the water and that was 7.6K at the double brutal extreme triathlon in September last year that in about two hours and 48 minutes or so I believe and since then my desire to do any real high volume swimming has been quite low to be honest as the prep was very demanding and it didn't leave a sour taste in my mouth but I just haven't had the burning desire to get out into the open water and build my swimming volume as I normally do but I'm back I'm here I'm excited and I'm already enjoying being in this setting so I'm looking forward to going through the same experience that some of you might be going through in terms of the re and it'll be good to hold myself accountable to some of the tips I'm giving you today as I properly get back into the open water 2023 onwards. I've been in and out of the pool, I've been doing some drill work, I've been doing maintenance work, no real swims have been more than 1500 meters or 2k, so I'm confident in the water right now, but I have felt better, that's for sure. So let's see how the cold affects me. Okay, so filming a video around this swim is clearly a method of procrastination and I've been putting this off long enough, so I will very non-graciously give this to the man behind the camera and I will take a secondary piece of kit so that I can procrastinate a little more before I actually get started. Okay, so I'm wading in now and it is important to consider acclimatization because whether you are in Scotland, like I am, or somewhere a little bit warmer, the sea, reservoirs, lakes are likely gonna be colder than the pool that you are used to. Cold has just hit my delicate areas and that's a little bit of a gasp. You can hear the shortness of breath a little bit. And at this point, it's important to take a little bit of time to just get used to that sensation, get used to that cold. Take your time so that you can get your breathing under control and then you get under the water. In terms of stroke, your open water stroke is going to be a little bit different. You're going to want to get a little bit more clearance over the top in case there's any waves to deal with. And in terms of breathing, because of the cold, if you're used to breathing one, two, three, one, two, three, it might be difficult to maintain that to start with. So you might actually be better breathing on one side to get used to it as I will be doing today. So unfortunately, without any further ado, it's time for me to put my goggles on and get to work. Okay, swim complete, and I hope you enjoyed that sunrise as much as I did. Chef's kiss. And to do a Uno reverse, I will take this from the man behind the camera. As it is very important to get warm as quickly as you can once you are out, and to start basically getting out of your wet stuff and into your warm stuff. So make sure, as I said earlier, you've got structures in place to be able to do so, and that you make life as easy as you can. 
as I'm saying this, I realise that my hands are so cold, I'm really struggling to take off this glove. So do as I say, not as I do. But nonetheless, it's important to get into warm clothing as quickly as you can. So make sure to bring loose clothing, make sure to have a towel, make sure that you've got a way to get rid of your wet stuff without becoming a nightmare in your car or whatever it might be, seeping into your laptop. Nobody wants that. And that way you can deal with the cold, you can deal with the sort of agitated breathing, and you can deal with the stress that can come with getting acclimatized open water swimming more effectively. As you can probably tell, I'm too cold to really give you much more information at this location here. So I'm gonna get the heating up to the max, heated seats on, live a life of luxury for the next 30 minutes as I drive home and give you a bit more information once I'm back. So, see you there. Okay, good afternoon. I am back at the house. I am significantly warmer than I was when we last saw one another. And I just wanted to cover a final few things, which is first and foremost, if you are new to open water swimming, I understand and appreciate how daunting it can be. Every time I get back in the water, I do have moments of worrying about imaginary sea monsters and sharks that have never graced. UK waters, etc, etc. Confidence is always a bit lower, but exposure to it and steadily and cautiously building really does help. Big recommendation as well is obviously be safe. Goes without saying, if you're new to it, if you're scared of it, then grab a buddy, grab a group. I'm sure there's lots of access points for social groups around open water swimming available near you. I know there certainly are around me. Maybe that's me being spoiled in the area. I don't know, but have a look and see what you can find. If you do need to swim on your own, use a tow float, or if you're experienced like I am, then knowing that at any point in my swim today I could have just stood up or swam five yards to the left and stood up and been fine is a product of knowing your environment, which is very useful as well. So essentially plan ahead, prepare, and have a exit strategy. And that's pretty much all I need to tell you. Don't need to teach you to suck eggs when it comes to being safe in water. I'm sure your parents did that for you. So that is that. If you're wondering whether or not I am in golf gear, then you would be correct. My dad is up for the first time in a while and he's booked a golf tea time, which I'm not going to say no to. So that is something I'll be heading off for very soon. But before we do that, I'm gonna give you a few tips to leave with if you are prepping for a specific race or event in the open water. Obviously, refine your kit strategy, refine your planning your preparation, build your volume cautiously. There is a lot of upper body volume that goes with swimming and there's a lot of mobility restriction and there's a lot of fatigue to consider. So do please bear in mind the nature of your training program and approach to it and make sure that it is sensibly building in volume and that you are accounting for any additional fatigue in your upper body from your weight training, from any rowing, any CrossFit, anything like that, whatever it might be, do please bear that in mind. But other than that, get some skin in the game, sign up to something that is scary for you and give yourself a reason to get in the open water safely so that you are cautiously and optimistically building volume towards something exciting, building some resilience, learning some skills and getting outside in wonderful environments like I did this morning. So hopefully that has been useful today. I am gonna go and play a very, very below par, <laughs> pun intended, round of golf as it's been my first round of golf in about seven months which is something i want to improve on in 2023 but on that note i'm going to say goodbye ask you to like the video if you haven't yet done so comment down below with your thoughts and or feelings or recommendations make sure that you have hit subscribe and i will see you next time